Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Chris Arrestis, president of Retirement Genius. And we're here to talk about alternative funding solutions for long-term care for people who have failed to plan. First, Retirement Genius provides information and resources to help people achieve a well-balanced retirement. We focus on financial planning, health and long-term care security, and lifestyle. We believe you need to bring these three elements together to create a well-balanced retirement that people want and deserve. So let's start by talking about the lack of preparation when people look at long-term care. It's just something that people don't want to think about. They, they, they find it confusing. It's something they delay. It's a topic they avoid. Yet 70% of people over the age of 65 are going to need to pay for some form of long-term care in their remaining lifetime. But as I said, people are, they're not informed. They're not prepared. They haven't thought about or really understand the costs, how you're going to pay for care. There's confusion about what types of care. When people think of long-term care, they think of nursing homes and they assume, one, that they're never going to go into one. And then if they do, that somehow it just gets paid for. But people really don't understand the different forms of care, what's covered and what's not. And, and that's a real problem for families across this country. And long-term care is expensive. The average cost of care in 2020 are home care, $4,500 a month, assisted living, $4,300 a month, and care in a nursing home is $8,000 a month. And those are just the averages. In, in most places, you're going to find the cost can be much more expensive than that. Also, what people fail to understand is the difficulty in navigating the system. I, I like to refer to it as the long-term care industrial complex. People don't understand that Medicare and health insurance do not cover senior living and long-term care. And going on to Medicaid requires a, a spend down and, and it's very restrictive on care options. Once you've achieved getting on to Medicaid, and I always say, be careful what you wish for, because now you're at the poverty level and you're not really totally in control anymore of, of the choices you can make. Private pay, on the other hand, is the one option where you can maintain total control and financial protection for your family. And, and that's what I want to focus on. Long-term care insurance is, is a viable option to help people pay for the cost. We always encourage people to plan ahead, plan early, get long-term care insurance as part of their financial and retirement planning. And as we all know, the younger and healthier somebody is, if they're going to get insurance, the cheaper it's going to be, the better coverage they're going to be able to obtain. But what are the options available to people who wait until they're well into their senior, senior years or, or they're, now they have onset of illness, injury, chronic conditions, and they're in immediate need for care, but they haven't adequately prepared. They, they didn't get long-term care insurance. They, they don't have enough money in in savings and investments to just cut checks and cover whatever it is they need. You know, the, the vast majority of the middle class, they're not gonna just go immediately onto Medicaid and they can't just cut checks. They're, they're really caught in the middle. So what are some of the available options to review? Let's talk about alternative private pay options. Let's start with the reverse mortgage. And, and the most common reverse mortgage is a home equity conversion mortgage known, known as a HECM which is secured by the value of a home. Now, a HECM is obtained uh, as an FHA-insured non-recourse loan. This it can either be paid out as a lump sum, it can be paid as monthly income, or a line of credit, an LOC, can be established. And one of the advantages to a reverse mortgage is you don't make any payments while you're living in the home. You only have to pay a reverse mortgage back once you've left the home. So somebody could uh, access a reverse mortgage, use those funds to help them cover home care needs, other cost of living expenses, <clears throat> remain at home, and they're not making monthly payments to cover the reverse mortgage. To, to be able to qualify for a reverse mortgage, you've got to be age 62 or older, primary residence of the home, 
that you've got to bear in mind there will be origination and servicing fees and there will be accrued interest. While you're not required to pay back the loan while you're living in the home, you will be accruing interest during that time. And the upper limit of a HECM is $765,600. Another option for people to take a look at is the VA aid and attendance benefit. This is a monthly long-term care benefit that's paid to veterans that serve during an active period of war, which will cover them and or their spouse. So a veteran who's collecting the VA aid and attendance benefit by themselves currently could collect $1,936 a month paid towards care, long-term care services. A veteran and their spouse together receiving services could collectively get $2,295 and a surviving spouse receiving long-term care to get $1,244 a month towards their care needs. Eligibility for the VA aid and attendance benefit, you'd have to be honorably discharged from the military. You would have need to have served a minimum of 90 days during an 90 days of active duty and a minimum of one day served during an active period of war. There are income and asset limits applied towards VA aid and attendance eligibility. Think of it somewhat like the process of qualifying for Medicaid. If you are above the income and or asset limitations, that will impede your ability to qualify for this benefit. There's a minimum age of 65 and then a requirement that the money is being used to pay for disability related care or a need for long term care treating chronic conditions, somebody who is no longer able to care for themselves. Another option to consider is what's known as a senior bridge loan. This is a home equity line of credit that's secured against a home. Somebody would use this if they needed to get some form of care, move into an assisted living community, home care, what have you, uh, and they plan to sell the home, but it could be some time before the house sells, yet they need the care today. They can establish a senior bridge loan against their home and then only borrow what they need each month while they're receiving care and, and, and then and maintain that position until the loan is repaid when the house is sold or another form of, of uh, resources is accessed to cover care needs and pay back the loan. <clears throat> As I said, it's just used to bridge care needs until uh, someone can access other resources. The payments are directly made to any form of care that the person accesses. And while they have the senior bridge loan outstanding, for the first 60 months, they're only required to make interest payments. So it's interest only payments for the first 60 months, which typically should be more than enough time to, to get a house liquidated pay off the loan and then have the, the remainder of that money in place to start taking care of somebody's ongoing care needs. Another asset is the LTC life settlement. Long-term care life settlements can be a tax-free way to pay for an immediate need for care. So if somebody has, two, has lost two activities of daily livings or more, two ADLs, or they have less of two years or less of remaining life expectancy, this could be a very tax beneficial way for them to pay for their care needs. If you do a long-term care life settlement, you could receive a lump sum of money, or you could split a lump sum of money with also funding what's known as a long-term care benefit account. This is a protected benefit account that makes monthly payments directly to any form of care funded by the proceeds received from the life settlement. If somebody were to outlive the account, the balance, uh, if somebody were to outlive the account and spend it down, it's a Medicaid qualified spend down. If somebody were to not outlive the account and pass away before they had spent down what's in their account, any remaining balance would transfer to whoever they would name as their account beneficiary, which can be one or more people. So remember, life insurance policies are an asset and they have secondary market value through the life settlement. So a person who is looking for resources, if they have a life insurance policy, this can be a very advantageous way to pay for 
senior living and long-term care costs. Life settlements have grown into a very mainstream financial option for seniors. They're seeing TV commercials all the time. It's recognized by every form of care provider out there as another way to help people pay for care. There's also a lot of regulatory support for the use of long-term care life settlements as another funding tool for people paying for care needs. The National Conference of Insurance Legislators, the National Association of Insurance Commissioners have both endorsed the use of life settlements as an option to help people pay for long-term care, certainly as a better option than lapsing or surrendering a policy for an amount less than what might have been obtained through the life settlement in, the mar in its market value. There's also congressional support for this approach. Members of the House Ways and Means Committee have introduced a bill in Congress to create a tax-free health savings account that's funded exclusively by a life settlement, very much modeled after the long-term care benefit account that we've specialized in and brought to the market now over 15 years ago. So who would qualify for this approach? Well, people with chronic or deteriorating health conditions, people with potential uh, terminal conditions, people with, that have lo a loss of cognitive function and activities of daily living, an immediate need for care, and have a measurable life expectancy under 10 years. Again, possibly even terminal conditions. Typically, a life settlement is going to work for a, a policy owner with $100,000 of death benefit or greater. Any type of life insurance policy will qualify, and all forms of care will qualify to be funded by a LTC life settlement in the long-term care benefit account. All in from start to finish the process to liquidate the policy through a life settlement and set up either the long-term care benefit account or just receive the lump sum cash or split it between the two. It's about a 90-day process. There's no costs and no more premiums for the person who would use the life settlement for their life insurance policy. There's no wait periods. Once the settlement is done and the account or the money is, is funded, then they're immediately able to start putting those, those uh, resources towards their care needs. And there's no claims to file. Once the settlement is complete and their resources are in hand, they're able to use the money as they wish to pay for any form of care they want at whatever amount they need on a monthly basis. And because this is the sale of the life insurance policy at its market value to be used on care needs and the dollars to be spent on care needs, it's recognized across the United States as a Medicaid qualified spend down within the look back period for somebody who might eventually go over to Medicaid. Let's say they had enough money in their account to spend for two years in an assisted living community, spent it through and drained the account to, to nothing left they would then be able to shift over to Medicaid and the use of that account in the life settlement would be recognized as a qualified spend down and not count against their eligibility. <clears throat> the tax treatment, as I had pointed out from the uh, life settlement, if they are chronic or terminal, uh, can be received tax-free and any funds received from a life settlement uh, that are equal to or beneath what's been paid in premiums, their basis in the policy is received tax-free. So there's some tax advantages potentially for somebody who would do a life settlement and life settlements obviously financially reward somebody. The older and sicker they are, the more they're going to get as a percentage of their death benefit paid to them through the life settlement. <clears throat> so there are options here. There are options for, for people to bear in mind. People who haven't adequately planned for long-term care, we've gone through a number of mainstream private pay options that can supplement their cost of care. These are financial options that can be made readily available to seniors in need and can, for the most part, provide access to funds within 90 days or less. So, Agents and advisors are well positioned to add these solutions to their toolbox to help clients in need of funding for retirement and long-term care. At a minimum, these are, are financial options that people should be aware of. Uh, agents and advisors have a duty to give people as much information, inform them as well as possible as to what their options may be. And, and when they are ill-prepared for the cost of long-term care, uh, they don't have adequate 
planning and resources in place, but they have a home, the, the consideration of a reverse mortgage makes sense. If they're a veteran, looking into the veteran's aid and attendance benefit makes sense. If they're looking to sell their home but have an immediate need for care, the potential of a senior bridge loan is there for, for, for somebody to access. And if they own a life insurance policy, they sh certainly shouldn't abandon that policy by lapsing it or surrendering it without first finding out, could they be a candidate for a life settlement? And if so, going forward to use the life settlement as another way to access resources using that life insurance policy asset instead of abandoning it. <clears throat> so I wanna thank you so much for joining today's session. I'm Chris Erastus, president of Retirement Genius. I invite you to, to visit our website, retirementgenius.com. You'll find a, a lot of resources and information there and invite you to check out our blog where we're posting great information for families and advisors to use. Check out and follow my podcast, Retirement Genius. You'll find it. Uh, we're, we're a Forbes book podcast and you'll find us on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, anywhere you find a podcast, you'll find the Retirement Genius Podcast. Any, any information and more, you'll find at our website, retirementgenius.com. So I thank you so much for tuning in to uh, today's discussion. We look forward from hearing from you and working with you again 